Hello, this is Anthony from the AbletonCookbook.com. I'm going to show you uh, in this tutorial how to um, export stems uh, to to a, a WAV file or an AIFF file if you'd like that. Uh, the reason that you do this usually is so that you guys can um, work with another producer. Uh, it's an easy way to collaborate. Also, it's a it's a good way if you're um, if you're bouncing around between. Uh, between uh, DAWs like between Logic and Ableton or Ableton and Pro Tools or whatever it is you do, um, getting stems out is a good way to do that. So what I'm going to, and a stem just refers to, I'm sure that some of you have, have had this experience before, um, a stem refers to when you basically have a separate audio file for each track. And this makes uh, remixing a lot easier. It makes... Um, it makes editing a lot easier if you're doing it in a different DAW, like I said. So um, I'm going to, actually this is a real life example because I'm having some trouble with this track myself and I really wanted to send it over to my friend who um, who actually uses Ableton 7. So I'm actually gonna just stem it out and then send it over to him because uh, the compatibility between the two, I, I something gets messed up every time and frankly, uh, I'm going to eliminate the problems by just uh, stemming it out. So I'm going to play the track for you, but as you can see, it's got, man, a lot of tracks. I'm not sure exactly. I tried to group them into two groups, <laughs> into the sidechain and not sidechain group, but still within these, there's a lot of different um, different tracks. Uh, also, if you go back over here, you can see that there's another, um, there's a return that has a lot of this vinyl distortion on it which is what you're hearing right now. So um, that's also gonna have to come out. So let's just hear the track real quick. Start, let me start like fifth bar. Let's see what we're working with here. Oh. Then it sort of goes from there, here, and the chorus come in, such as it is. But I'm having some trouble with it because I think it's kind of static. I don't really like the mix that much. Um, I don't know if you're looking down here, but it's in the red the entire time. Every time I try to mix it down. Anyway, it's a general mess. So, um... What I'd like to show you is is how to render it first, and so rendering is um, is basically the process of getting the sound out of Ableton. And usually, what I do, rendering can be done either just um, let's see, go to where is it? I forget. I usually do it by key uh, shortcut, so I don't actually know where is it. Options. Well, I don't really know, so I'm not going to worry about it. So um, the way that you do it is you can actually just um, press Command-Shift-R. But here's the um, a little bit of the caution here. Is you look, Live will render the output of the chosen track over the selected time range. So if you don't select any time, it'll, select, it'll do everything here. And so I don't know how you guys work, but uh, myself, I tend to put a whole bunch of trash sort of here at the end stuff that I'm chopping up, stuff that I don't really have a place for yet. So I don't want it to actually render every single thing. So what I do is I will do this. So I'll play the last, you know, bar or so. I have two bars here. And then I just see how long the reverb trail is. I mean, this one is not too much reverb on it, so I'd say give it a, a bar, but sometimes you have stuff that has a lot of reverb trail on it, so you don't want to cut that out. But anyway, what I'll do is I will select this whole area from the, basically the first 78 bars. And the way that you can do that is really easily, so I have this selected here, scroll all the way down to the bottom, press shift, 
and you click at the beginning and it'll select everything. And now it'll just render this area as opposed to the whole thing. So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do Command Shift R, and now you'll see at the bottom, you'll see that it's just gonna render the first 78 tracks, or first 78 measures rather. So this is actually where you're going to stem it out. So at where it says export right here, you're gonna to have to render track, instead of master, you're gonna do all tracks. And see, you can also do all of these tracks separately if, I, if you'd like to, if you just wanna render the drums or whatever, I have four called Chopped and Squelch and Squiggle and all this dumb stuff here. So, um, But you can also just render all tracks. And now I will get probably, I don't know, 10 different uh, audio tracks. Um, you know, take off Normalize, take off Render as Loop. All this stuff that you would use to finish the track, in, including uh, the, the analysis file and all that good stuff, um, you're to turn that all off. The reason is that a lot of this stuff uh, the normalizing and the dithering stuff. I don't actually dither right now. You're going to do when you finish the track. So since I'm assuming you're taking this to another DAW, you're going to not want to do this because you're only going to want to do it once because I don't really understand how it works, but I do understand that you should only do it once. So anyway, so um, then when, you're, when you've selected the tracks that you'd like to render, you've selected the tracks, wait, you've selected the number of bars you'd like to render, selected the tracks you'd like to render, you go ahead and press OK. Um, I'm not going to render all of them simply because that would be a huge pain. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a little shorter section. Like let's say I just want to render the, the chorus here. So I'll do the same thing where I select the beginning of the section I want to render and then the end of the section I want to render. Just do Command Shift R. And now you can see there's only going to be about um, eight track, eight, eight bars rendered rather. So all tracks is selected. I'm going to go ahead and press OK. And uh, this is project is called Yaz Flute. So I'm going to go ahead and press Save. And now it's going to render everything to the desktop. So now if I go back to the desktop. I will be able to see, here we go. Now I have a wave file with all the different tracks that I have, and um, they you'll see that it has the song title at the beginning, and then it has the name of the track. So once again, I mean, a, a good thing here, and this is sort of like uh, advising you because I mess this up myself, is uh, make sure you name the track something uh I guess, recognizable. Otherwise, I, I have a whole bunch of unnamed ones all the time, and then I just basically have a whole bunch of uh, WAV files that I have to guess what to do with. So anyway, I hope that helps. Um, that's how to stem out a track to be remixed. Um, if you have any questions about this, go ahead and leave a comment in this section, and I hope to talk to you soon. Bye. All right, so here's a little bonus. Uh, oh, sorry. Here's a little bonus for you. Um, I know that some people have asked, how uh, can you drag a whole bunch of uh, clips into live and have them all create their own track? So you'll notice if you batch drag stuff, so let's go ahead and, so from, from the last tutorial, what I've done is I've taken a whole bunch of clips, uh, stems from, the, from the, my track, and I've put them in a, in a folder here um, in the live browser. Um, so what I can do is, I, let's say, I, you know, select all these. If I drag them into live, you'll see what happens. They all come in in the same track, which is kind of a pain, um, especially if you're doing a remix or something, you have a whole bunch of stems. So the way to get around this is really simple. All you do is you select them all, stop the, the preview there, press command, or um, I guess control on a window, and then hold that down while you drag it in and you'll see that it makes a new track for every uh, clip you drag in. So you can do that for any kind of batch dragging and then you know you have the, all of them together, which is really useful. Oh, which is really useful. Anyway, so I hope that helps. Um, that's just a little extra tip. Um, have a good one. And if you have any questions about this or the last tutorial, go ahead and shoot me a comment on Twitter or ask me a question on the blog, okay? Have a good one, bye.